everyone, hopefully quite a, quite a few of the audience are probably familiar with chat GPT. Um, I'm going to, um, it's really good at these type of things. I think writing is really good at, um, yep. it can vary a little bit with knowledge. I asked it around, uh, what's an XG boost algorithm and it was pretty good. Uh, but this one, let's write, let's ask it to write a chapter by chapter outline for a book on generative AI. So I really want to write a book. So I figured, Hey, can Jack, chat GPT do the heavy lifting for me? So let's see what it can do. Hmm. Here we go. Chapter one. <laughs> Introduction. Chapter so two. I guess for anybody that hasn't seen Chat GPT, th this is what it like, this is what it is, right? You give it text, you talk to it, you ask it questions, you ask it to do something for you, and it gives it back as a text response. Um, yeah, and, and it keeps the context of like what you've written to it, but the context of what it's generated so far to pull out um, basically what it's given. And uh, it has like a series of next, be uh, next best guesstimates as to what it should be writing next, whether it's a paragraph or just a sentence or even just a word, right? Um, yeah. But because it's been trained on such a large corpus of data, it, it actually appears really, really uh, smart, right? Like, because I, I don't know how big the model is, but it's like <laughs> billions upon billions of of different pieces of, of, of text and literature being plugged into it from everywhere. Yeah. The, the other amazing thing as well, they've also used uh, supervised learning. So I think it was the second or third, it was done in three stages, either the second or the third stage. But then they took the outputs of ChatGPT and got a human to rate which are the outputs were good and which were bad, and that further improved the model, um, yep. which is something we've not seen before, I don't think, with previous iterations of, of, of GPT models. Yeah, usually that's like, uh, I, th I think I've seen a lot of that in the BERT models, is it's either supervised or semi-supervised. And you can see here, it's not only predicting the next few works, it's actually taking the context of the question and creating something really quite new. So it's really quite amazing, really. Like this is... Yeah. This is like this would be acceptable if you saw a book with six, say an ebook with six chapters, and you saw this, uh, you know, and it was advertised. I don't know for I don't know two or three dollars to buy. You probably look at it and go, "That's not bad. That looks quite good. Good book." Yep. No, so so let, let's let's say that you know this is going to be an ebook, and so you can double the amount of like pages, right? Can we can we test like uh, just asking it to turn it into a a, a twelve chapter? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Format, right? Okay. Like, how does it expand these points? So the key with this is you've got to be very specific. So can we add six more chapters, if I can type today, to this book? <laughs> Let's see what happens. It would be funny it came back and went, no. Oh, yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> this be the yeah. Wonderful. I, I might ask for my advance. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's go one further. I, I like chapter seven. Um, can can you expand on the first um, two paragraphs of chapter? Oh, I can't type today. Of chapter seven of this book. <laughs> now, this I haven't tried. I want to see if this works. Yeah, it does work. I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You you've seen it. There you go. Wonderful. Look at that. Yeah, and you can you can say um, you tone it down a paragraph or or increase the amount of paragraphs for this by four, and then it's it's going to like it's going to basically like expand or or kind of like contract um, what it's saying to to effectively say the same thing, um, just in the the length that you need it to to have. Provided. It's, a, it's yeah. very interesting, and you have to like you have to be cautious about like how how this there. Uh, devalues authors now right because that's what you you know you're seeing now like you can just write them for you right and it kind of looks brand new and it probably is brand new doesn't correlate directly to something that exists out there probably taking pieces of everything and um and, and when you start seeing something like this you have to think about the future of where this ai is going and you'd say please generate me a movie script for a brand new movie with you know a, a vague idea about what you might want in that movie and go ahead and expand it and then later down the track when we've got really good animation you say take that movie and just design all the characters and and make the movie for me so you know content because it becomes devalued and like effectively like could be like free to a degree right well, the, the one thing to like be aware of is like you still need an expert 
in these topics like to understand whether what it's saying is accurate or not because it is it is doing next next best guesstimates i can't speak That's today right. And yep. so that means that, like, even though it looks correct upon reading, there might be subtleties that actually need um, corrections um, just because it's kind of like put a whole bunch of words, you know, that are similar to each other into that one sentence, but it's actually garbled to the expert sometimes. Yep. So you still, at the moment, it's still in those days where you still need to be an expert and know what you're doing. But, like, if you were writing a book and you were using this and you're an expert in the space, like, you could write that book in, like, one-eighth of the time, right? Yeah, exactly right. It's like the music example. You know, you don't have to be a musical expert to hear in that first example. It's got some limitations. And so, but you can hear the scope of taking that and extending it. And for me, it's the same with ChatGPT. You know, it would probably take me to write a, I guess even, even a small ebook, probably six, maybe nine months. This would shorten it dramatically. And also it's given me ideas as to structure things. It would improve the structure and creativity of the book. The only thing it doesn't do though, um it's it's really poor at comedy and jokes have you ever tried it trying to do comedy it's terrible i, I don't um, know i've lost my comedy um i don't know wit or something, tell but... us a machine learning joke chat gpt here we right, go okay okay let's just tell give the audience an example a really funny machine learning joke now if this if this is funny i'm gonna fall off my chair but it's so i do a bit of comedy on the side i tell you my my career is safe at the moment here we go I'm laughing because I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> See, this is where this is where that context matters. the The other thing, the other thing to point out with this as well is, uh, it it excels at giving you things that it has large amounts of data on, and it gives you the average of all that stuff. So if you go into topics that hasn't really been trained on, or there's not much text for it to kind of like um, take in, um, you you'll get more of a variable answer, right? And I I think there's yeah. More jokes on Reddit, but maybe less jokes and you know professional uh, books. <laughs> so maybe that's why it doesn't have a sense of humor. I, I yep. think you're right. At the end of the day, you're right. It's, it's on the mod, on the date it's been trained on, and so yeah. I've even asked to make it funny. Of course, here's another one. Why did the deep learning network cross the road to get to the other data set? Oh dear! If I use that in my set, I'd be thrown off stage. I think. <laughs> well, people would laugh, but they'd probably laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Should we do it? Should we do another demo? Should we, should we move yeah, let's to go through the next yeah, let's go. a little bit more, um, a little bit more, what have we got? A little bit more a a AWS. So, um, yeah, Amazon SageMaker. So, um, I'm going to do a little bit of demo on SageMaker jumpstart, but before people get too excited, um, SageMaker, first of all, is our machine learning service in AWS. It does a whole range of, uh, different, uh, provides a whole range of machine learning services. So right down to, you know, uh, a very precise machine learning lifecycle for data scientists all the way up to business analysts who can use SageMaker Canvas, for example. So there's a whole range of different uh, users, user bases. There is an article to read here to get started. There's a few things you need to understand. But once you're into SageMaker and you created your own domain, you effectively then, here's a domain I've created earlier. I can then log in as a particular user. So I've got a user down here called GPT Demo. So I'm going to do a, bit, a demo on the... Um, not a chat GPT demo, but a GPT demo. So that's a similar model that chat GPT uses. I'm going here and I just click studio and launch what's called a SageMaker studio, which is integrated development environment. Um, and here we are, I just had a bit of a, a makeover since reinvent. Um, and what we can do, we can go down to quick start solutions. This is where all the jump starts live. Um, there's lots of them. Um, you just simply type um, some words in here, maybe uh, language, you're interested in language models. So mm -hmm. start to list all different language models, or maybe you're specifically interested in, in BERT, which is a language model. And so all these different items can come up, um, basically. Um, and you, you basically scroll through, you decide which ones you want. Um, there's a disabled diffusion one there, there's vision models, there's some uh, text models here. So we can, for example, explore the text models. There's just so many of them. And what you can do, you can go into these different text models and then you can simply deploy one. Now, what I've done, I've deployed one a little bit earlier. Actually, we just search for that, can we? Just, just search for GPT, see if we can find, there we go, GPT2. So I've now got the SageMaker Jumpstart GPT2 model. And it's, and it's very simple as configuring my deployment. So this is the size of the instance I want to uh, run for inference. It even gives me um, 
sets up my endpoint for me, sets all the configuration for SageMaker to enable me to, to run code and make predictions. Um, I could decide where I want to um, store my artifacts. I've got security settings, and then I just click deploy, off it goes. I'm not going to do that here because I already have one I deployed earlier. Once you've deployed the model, it usually takes this particular one, I think it took about 15, 20 minutes to deploy. It's running on a, um, a particular in, a virtual machine instance. can't remember the uh, number. Um, and then you click on generate notebook, and it generates this code for you. And so what I've done, I've simply doctored the code here where it says text one and text two and put some fresh text in there. Today, I'm going to describe generative AI as my first piece of text, and then what is generative AI is my second piece of text. And so this model, a generative pre-trained transformer, go on, it's a mouthful, isn't it, is, is what GPT stands for. It's the same GPT and chat GPT, but this essentially is the version two model, and the version two GPT model is able to predict text. So it's not going to allow me to ask it a question and give me beautiful answers like chat GPT, but it is going to look at what I've written, and then start to write some, hopefully, some original generative sort of text. So should we run that model? Should we Should we do a bit of running? So let's just run Yeah, let's cell. have a look. We're going to run this cell. We'll, and I'll let you improvise, and we can put some additional text in here. Let's hope this works. Well, I can also put on that SoundCloud. Like, we can play a couple of tunes as we kind of go through <laughs> this. Oh, that's a good idea. There we go. Here we go. So here's our input text. Today I'm going to describe generative AI. I have I have seen nothing yet, question mark. Only this time, dot, dot, dot. This time it will be you who makes the AI grow and grow with the results. <laughs> <laughs> As it seems, comma. So it starts to write some really cool prose. It's actually not bad. So, so, it? so it does have humor. Here we go. Uh, exactly. It's coming good. I think they've, you've got, you, you could do too much to the model, can't you, sometimes? Just leave it in its earlier yeah. state. Maybe version two is better. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next part. So here we are. What is generative AI? Um, what is generative AI? Question mark. Why do we get stuck to the same lines over and over again? And what about the questioner's questions? That's great. <laughs> it's very who watches the watchman there. It's, it's very, it's, very it's, it's like it's like a philosopher, isn't it? I'm just about to wait wait to break into some sort of standard Plato speak or something. <laughs> Let, let's give it another spin. Let's feed it some extra text, I reckon. Oh, good stuff. Let's let's try it. What would you like to let's let's do something different then? What would you like to pop in here? What sort of text do you want to put in here then? Let's have a look. <laughs> do we do something practical like a question or do we um <laughs> what do you reckon, Paul? Give us something. You know, what Go is a ball. good use case for a shed? What is a good use case for a shed? Did I hear that right? That's what, uh, yeah. that's, let's try that. Excellent. And what would you like and to would you Would you recommend a shed over a TARDIS? A shed over a TARDIS. Right, here we go. So we, we're going to rerun this model. So what I'm doing is running each line. Run this line. The little star means it's running. See how quick it takes. It doesn't take long to run. Mm. I think it's an M5. Um, is it M5 dot large? It's not a very big instance. It's running quite nicely. Here we go. What is a good use case for a shed? A local business owner asked. <laughs> That's quite good. We need we need shed storage. We need storage of waste. We're not going to be able to take the trash or the recycling into the landfill, even from a dot, dot, dot. <laughs> well, I mean, like, my, you know, my shed is very useful, but uh, there is a lot of rubbish and uh, stuff that you probably should not be in the shed in here. So <laughs> points for accuracy. That's awesome, isn't it? Would you recommend a shed over a TARDIS? The one in the picture was a housewife shed who was purchased on the spot. She was a friend of the couple. No one has been charged with anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it knows that a TARDIS is related to some sort of police box or something because it talked about not being charged with anything. So that's the context. How cool is that? Yeah, but this, this is where it's lacking data in that domain, right? So it kind of yeah. just like fills the gaps of guesstimates even more so. Uh, yeah, it, it, a shed or versus a cabin might have been more interesting to see. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely right. <laughs> cool. Um, what else have I got for you? Let me show you a couple of uh, blog posts. 
So I'm sure a few of your viewers would be really keen. How do I replicate the jump start? So it's a really nice um, uh, blog post here. This is around GPT, which you just saw, and also Blue Models, which is another form of uh, natural language processing model, an NLP model. And it explains a little bit more around what the GPT-2 and Bloom are doing in terms of text creation. And it also shows you then a little bit, here's a video actually on how to get that jump start running. It, it took me five minutes to learn how to do it and then probably 15 minutes to actually run it. And this is an example code here too.